Yes, sir. Could you please tell me where Milton Burl's dressing room is? I'm sorry, I, I don't know where it is, Mr. Holt. I not only think that I'm entitled to a raise, but also a promotion. I wouldn't ask for a promotion unless I thought that I was entitled to it. I also think it would be financially advantageous to the network. You see, my, my pages uniform is sort of wearing out, and, well, instead of buying me a new suit, just make me a vice president, and I'll wear my own suit. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. I'm happy that you can see it my way, which leaves us with just one question to be answered. What office shall I use? Oh, no, 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 not yours. No, I, I wouldn't think of taking yours. You've done such a good job with this company, Mr. Brown. I... Very well, if you insist. I wouldn't worry, Mr. Brown, if I were you about finding another job. I'm sure you'll find another slot in this organization. I understand that there is a job open uh, for a page. I'll be happy to recommend you. Mickey Mulligan, what on earth are you doing? Well, uh, take a letter, Miss Harding. Uh, well, uh, oh. <laughs> Please. Any way to start a letter? No, no, please help me up, will you? I'll, I'll break my neck. Mr. Brown walks in. He'll do it for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm dying to hear an explanation of how you got in that position. But I'm afraid to ask you. Oh, well, I was just rehearsing to ask Mr. Brown for a better job. As an acrobat? Well, gee, Pat, you know, it's a funny thing. Barney, he, he's been promoted to transcriptions, and Eddie, he's been made a, a assistant director, and, and I was here long before those fellows came to work here. Well, don't be impatient, Mickey. Your time will come. I don't know. I, I've been a page so long, I, I don't think they can think of me as anything else. Now, Mickey. I guess they, they think I don't look important enough to give all the good jobs to the taller fellows. It's ironic. The difference between success and failure is the difference between this and this. Mickey. It's not that way at all. It's just your imagination. You're tall enough for me. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've got to prove it to myself. Believe me, Mickey, size has nothing to do with success. I can't help but think if I was a little taller that more people might notice me. just came. Good. Did he bring back my sincere suit? Sincere suit? He brought your blue serge suit. That's my sincere suit. When I put it on, I look like an aggressive young executive type man. Who hasn't got all his buttons? Huh? On his sleeve. Oh. <laughs> I'll sew them on as soon as I put my dresses away. Oh, Michael, the way you pack a huh? suitcase. Here, let me do it for you. Mom, what am I going to do without you? Will you really be needing these? When I meet Mr. Hercules, I'm gonna need all the ammunition I can get, and three and a half inches is gonna help a lot. Oh, Michael, is this trip necessary? Do you really have to go to Riverton? Well, Mom, we discussed this at the dinner table. You know how important this job is to me. If I get it, it might mean a whole new future for me. Well, you feel you can get a better job outside the network. That doesn't mean you have to leave town. No, look, you talk as if I was going to the end of the earth. Riverton's only 250 miles away. 250 miles. We mulligans have never been separated, except for the short time you're in the service. Oh, I just hate to think of you going, Michael. Oh, well, Mom, you're getting yourself all upset over nothing. Let's not even talk about Riverton anymore. Let's just change the subject. All right, dear. Well, it... Gee, it... Looks like we're gonna have a swell football team at the old high school this year. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we got a new halfback. His name is Franny Winswicky. He can pass and punt, and he runs like a jackrabbit. Uh, Winswicky, is he a local boy? No, he's from upstate, Riverton. Oh, Michael, do you have to go? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Say, Michael, I've been reading over this ad about that job in Riverton with Hercules Industries. Are you sure this job's for you? Well, I, I hope so. Why? Is there anything wrong with it, Pop? Wanted. Ambitious, hard-driving, iron-willed executive. Able to command men, assume responsibility, and direct the destiny of a mammoth industry. Well? One thing you've got to say for us mulligans, we've got nerve. <laughs> Joe, tell him he shouldn't go. Now, Nell, I can't stand in Michael's way. Suppose my father told me not to leave home. I wouldn't have come out here. I wouldn't have joined the police force. You'd never have seen how handsome I looked in my uniform, and we'd never gotten married. Michael wouldn't have had this problem. Problem? I have no problems, Mom. Look, I'll only be gone two days. If I don't get the job, I'll be right back. And if I make good, I'll send for you. Well, I don't like it at all. Now, Nell, you don't want to stand in the way of an ambitious, hard-driving, iron-willed executive <laughs> able to command men, assume responsibility, and direct the destiny of a great industry? Mammoth industry. Oh, Michael, why don't you leave tomorrow morning instead of tonight? I'll bake a cake and we'll have it while we watch television. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mom, but I I've got to go tonight. I have an appointment tomorrow with Mr. J.R. Hercules, the president of Hercules Enterprises. Well, I, I've got to be going, I guess. Oh, no, I'll get that, Michael. Oh, Michael, uh, whenever you feel you need help, just remember that your guardian angel will be right there looking after you. Thanks, Mom. Well, this is it. <laughs> Look out, world. Here comes another mulligan. <laughs> Look, kid, yes. you should have gotten a five-dollar room. There, you have a breathtaking view of the city incinerator. Oh. <laughs> oh look, I, I hate to bother you, but uh, where is the bed? Right in front of your eyes. In front of my eyes? What do you... Oh, how about that? That's clever. That's very clever. Gee. <laughs> no springs? For two and a half bucks? Oh, come now. Well, and look, I want to warn you about something. Don't ever pull the bed out of the wall before four in the afternoon. Why? The guy in the next room uses it during the day. <laughs> oh, oh well, I haven't. <laughs> I hope he doesn't eat crackers in bed. <laughs> Will you be wanting something else? No, that, that's, that'll be all, thank you. Well, then in that case, I'll be gone. Is there, does the roof leak or something? Not as long as the weather stays clear. Mm. Well, I, I, I don't want to hold you up. You are. You know what I think? I, I think you're deserving of a tip. I am? Yes, sir, I, I really do. I think so. You know, I, I've never done much tipping before. You'll have to tell me how much to... You just, uh, you just say when. You just, you just tell me when. The, the word is when. Not huh, when. Oh, uh, would you take a traveler's check, maybe? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. My mind was somewhere else, on the 6th at Pimlico. Uh, well, will that be enough? Oh, sure, sure. And look, if you want anything else, just call down and I'll be right up with it. Oh, fine, fine, thanks. Thanks very much for your help, sir. Hey, uh, kid. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> operator. This is Mr. Mulligan in 22 and a half. Uh, would you tell room service to send me up a nightcap, please? <laughs> root beer. <laughs> yes, ma'am, just root beer. Oh, and, uh, would you please send up ten dollars worth of change? I... I may want to tip the boy. <laughs> now, get my sincere suit out so it'll be... Get all the wrinkles out for tomorrow. We... <laughs> See how I could have overlooked it. You mean you packed two of your dresses in Michael's suitcase? Well, it looks that way. That's fine. 
When he meets J.R. Hercules, he'll certainly look the part of the ambitious, hard-driving, iron-willed executive. Oh, Joe, what are we going to do? Michael needs a sincere suit. We can mail it to him, can't we? But it'd never get there in time. Michael's appointment with Mr. Hercules is tomorrow morning. Have you got any suggestions? Well, there's no way out of it. We've just got to get on a plane and take it up to him. Now, are you sure you didn't plan it this way all along? Oh, why, Joe. <laughs> Well, hadn't we better see about getting plane tickets? And... Well, as a matter of fact, I, I phoned for reservations myself two hours ago. Joe. <laughs> Boss? Why I married you, I'll never know. Because nobody else would have you. Oh, is that so? That's so. Do me a favor. Shut up! <laughs> a successful executive works without distraction. executive is forceful. He is capable of handling people beneath him and above him. As one executive to another, I firmly believe that I am capable of a top position in one of your higher echelons of your organization. And I must caution you, sir, do not let the surface appearance of being too small fool you. I'm the tallest short man you'll ever meet. And I say again, Mr. Hercules, as I've always said, and I repeat, uh, think big, and you are big, after all. I I didn't come 250 miles to be turned down, no sir, Mr. Hercules. If I didn't think that I was the man for the position. 2.30, gosh. Gotta get some sleep. There's a Mickey Mulligan here to see you. Oh, yes, Mulligan. How tall is he? Oh, uh, oh, he's, uh, uh, short. Well, how short? Oh, well, uh... Well, do I look down at him, straight at him, or up at him? I'd say you'd look, uh, somewhere in the vicinity between, uh, up and straight ahead. Yeah, and that's what I was afraid of. I want someone that I can look down at. Mr. Hercules, he's come a long distance. Won't you see him anyway? To be a successful executive, always think big. Never admit that there's anything you cannot do. No matter what tests you're faced with. Always make an attempt to surmount it. Always believe that nothing is impossible. Mr. Hercules, sir. Uh, J.R. I believe that I am the man for the job. I, I think big and I look big. I, I believe that I would be a, an asset to your organization. Uh, Mr. Hercules will see you now. I, I know that I can do the job. The difficult, I'll do right away. The impossible, after lunch. I said, Mr. Hercules will see you now. Show him in. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Thank you. Excuse me, is your father in? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I couldn't see you from back then. You were playing with the... Playing? Train. I wasn't playing, Mr. Mulligan. 
This is a model of what I manufacture. Yes, sir. I manufacture the largest locomotives in the entire world. I see. I build the biggest bridges, the biggest skyscrapers. I do everything big. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As I've always said, think big, and you are big. Think big, and you are big. Yes, sir, I, I see uh, what you mean. I'm, I'm sorry, but you are definitely an up. An up? I was only hoping that you might at least be a straight ahead. <laughs> well, we can get down. Straight ahead. Now, we get down to business. Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, Mulligan, I can see that you flunked your first test. Flunked? What, what have I done wrong, sir? When I put a cigar in my mouth, I expect someone to light it for me. Oh, I'm sorry. In a crowded room, I usually create quite a blaze. Yes, sir. Uh, just took your matches, and I'll, I'll light it for you, sir. I assure you, it, it won't happen again. Hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I want a man for my personal assistant. Well, I think I could be that man, sir. Well, then you must anticipate my every thought. Your every thought? Why is it that I haven't an ashtray for my cigar? Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, the man I hire as my assistant must be able to type. Do you type, Mulligan? No, sir. I mean, I mean yes, sir. That is, I took a mm. course in school. I see. Well, over there is the typewriter. Now, let me see what you can do. <clears throat> Ready, sir. Well, uh, aren't you going to take the cover off? Oh. <laughs> just a little nervous, sir. I'll be ready in just a second. There we are. I'm now, ready now. Now, take this dictation. Yes, sir. Uh, the principal advantages of the diesel locomotive over the conventional steam engine type is the more efficient combustion at elevated temperatures. Now, uh, read that back. The. That's not very good. I know. Well, to tell you the truth, sir, typing wasn't one of my favorite subjects in school. Yes, I see. Well, uh, Mulligan, I'm going to level with you. What? The moment you walked into this office, you were just not the type for the job. Well, why, sir? You're too tall. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Why, that is, it's, it's my shoes, you see. Well, I, I put I, heels on I, my shoes. I'm not interested in your shoes. Now, I'm a busy man. Good day. But, sir. Good day. Too tall. <laughs> How am I going to tell Mom and Pop that I was turned down because I was too tall? Who'd believe it? I don't even believe it myself. I'd love to see his face now. Close the door, Nell. He might hear us. Joe, do you think maybe we should tell him we're here? Oh, no, Nell. He's got to do this on his own. Michael would never forgive us if he knew we followed him up here. But I'd like to know how he made out with his interview. He didn't look too happy just now. Well, that doesn't mean he didn't get the job. When did you ever see an executive who looked happy? Hmm? <laughs> might as well call Mom and Papa. Tell him I'm coming home. Out of order. Everything's out of order. Hurry up now. Let's get something to eat while the coast is clear. All right, coming, Joe. Yeah, what y'all want? 
Oh, pardon me, uh, ma'am, but I was wondering if I could borrow your phone for a moment. Mine is out of order. Uh, phone? Well, I don't rightly know. I'm a stranger here myself. I just let a petticoat got in from little old Atlanta. That's a little old Georgia, you know, George. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, it would only take a minute, uh, you all. Are you all by any chance a Yankee? We don't have any truck with Yankees, you understand? Uh, pardon me, ma'am, but uh, I was just wondering if I could borrow your telephone to phone my folks to tell them I was coming home. You are? Yes, but I, I, I didn't think it would make you happy. Uh, how come you're going home, son? Well, you see, I came here for a big job, and I, I done got turned down. Well, they turned you down? Did they give you any reason? Yeah, they said I was too tall. Too tall or too small? I think he said too tall. Uh, give us that again, sir. They said I was too tall. You'd have to see me to see how ridiculous that is. I, I don't know what I'm going to tell my folks. Well, I'm sure they'll understand. Me, uh, I too. Yeah, but there's more to it than that. You see, the, the reason I... I wanted the job so badly as I was trying to prove something to myself and to my folks, and, well, I didn't want to go home and be a failure. The Colonel says that his advice to you is to not give up so easy. If you really want this job, fight for it. Try a new attack. They say you're too tall, go back and try it, shoulder. That's what Robert E. Lee would have done. <laughs> well, uh, well, folks, you know, I don't think I'll be, be needing your phone after all. I want to thank you, Colonel, sir, for your good advice. From now on, I'm going to play it small. Think small, and you are small. Thanks, Colonel. And thanks, Robert E. Lee. Oh. oh you again. Yes, would you uh, mind telling Mr. Hercules that I'd like to see him, please? Oh, well, you don't have an appointment. Uh, who sent you? Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Huh? Oh, would you mind telling Mr. Hercules that I'm here in low heels this time? Look, uh, Mr. Mulligan, I'm sorry, but Mr. Hercules has already hired an assistant, and they've left for New York. Left for New York? Oh. But uh, his son, J.R.J.R., J.R., is looking for an assistant. I'll see if he can see you. Oh, that, that, that's very nice of you. Uh, Mr. Hercules, there's a Mr. Mulligan here about that position. Send him in, please. Go right in. Thank you very much. I don't think I'll fail this time. <laughs> Mr. Hercules, Jr.? That's right. I suppose you're here about the job as my assistant. That's right, sir. I came in to see your father the other day, and I tried to look tall. Actually, I'm not tall at all. I'm really small. So if I do get the job, you won't have to worry about me towering over you or looking down upon you. <laughs> oh. Is uh, that so? <laughs> you think you're deflated? Maybe I should have worn my insincere suit. Hi there. I'm Mickey Rooney. I have an important message for you. Who is it? It's just little old us, the colonel and me. Oh, I was just packing... Mom! <laughs> Gosh, what are you doing here? Oh, we all just moseyed up to pay off the mortgage on the little old plantation. You're having a little trouble cashing in that old Confederate money. <laughs> room 24, the two Southerners. It was you. Now, Michael, we didn't mean to shadow you. We just came up to bring you your sincere suit. Well, thanks a lot, but you didn't have to go to the trouble. I, I didn't get the job. Did you play it short, like the Colonel said? I played it short. I played it every way possible. Son, that should prove to you how silly it is to worry about size. It's what's in your head that counts, not how high it is off the floor. Michael, we learned in the Army that a successful general always picks his own battleground. 
If you make size the issue, people are going to judge you by your size. But if you make ability the issue, they'll judge you by your ability. Check? Check. All right, son, let's get started home. Michael, are you sure you haven't forgotten anything? I hope not. I'll take one last look around. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> it's only 3.30. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I hope I didn't disturb you. Just go back to sleep. Then. It's 3.30. Becky <laughs> Rooney will be back in just a moment. And now a word from next week's sponsor. Oh, oh I, I forgot something. I forgot to tell you all that that was the wonderful word from the sponsors who'll bring you our show next week at this very same time. I hope you'll be watching for us then. Until that time, good night, folks.